Good morning everyone, James Denton, Fluent Blue here. Uh, welcome back. Uh, just wanted to do a quick video for you today, following on from the blog that we did. Um, if you didn't check it out, have a little look on our website. Um, it was based around, is your true IT budget hiding from you? Uh, simple question really. Um, but we've sort of been having a few chats with schools over the last couple of months um, about sort of budget efficiency, um, what are we spending our money on, what's right, what's not, uh, do we need certain things, you know, should we be looking at something else. So what we decided to have a chat about really is kind of a few core areas which I think um, we can save money. Um, pretty quickly and pretty instantly. So I just want to do a quick video for you today um, just to go over a few of the kind of uh, major points really where I think that we can save some um, some cash. So the first one uh, is espresso. So for those of you who who know it, especially if you're in Bedfordshire, um, I've certainly been seeing espresso being used for many, many, many years. Um, little cash box which has multimedia games and learning tools all built into it. You browse to it, um, you start up the game and you use it as part of your uh, IT teaching, uh, maybe your IT suite or a little bank that you've got in your classroom. So that's been out for a long time actually. So I think a lot of schools all over the uh, all over the country will be used to espresso. Um, like I said, especially Bedfordshire schools, because I've pretty much seen it in every school I've been to over the years at some point. Now, the major thing for espresso is there's been a huge change in sort of technology and uh, content availability over the last few years. Uh, mainly the uh, kind of uh, the online based things. So things that you can just go on the internet and find. So uh, all these little learning tools and games and things like on BBC websites. Um, like I said, there's, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different resources that you can go to to find all these types of things. And the majority of them are free. Um, very useful, very poignant to what you're teaching, you can be lesson specific on them, um, and they work very, very well. Um, so the kind of the need for espresso um, has kind of dropped quite a lot, um, and especially with AV products and interactive flat panels, which we've, we've also done videos on, um, having multimedia software that you can create your own little presentations and things around your teaching goals. Um, coming, with the, coming with the screens now, kind of out the box, Espresso again is not being used as much. Um, and I think the major thing with it is, espresso can cost about 2,000 pound a year to have. And schools have probably been paying this 2,000 pound a year for years and years. Um, but really what we've, what we've done is we've gone into a schools and, and said, find out whether we're using it. Uh, speak to your staff, say right, how much of your general you know, weekly teaching do you use it? And if, it, if that's pretty low, then to be honest with you, you probably don't need to be paying £2,000 a year for. Um, on occasions, we've actually seen schools just unplug it and see what sort of response they get, really. And uh, in a lot of cases, no response. So you've literally got £2,000 saving instantly. And that £2,000 can be re you know, reinvested, redistributed to various different things that you want to do. So you've got a decent amount of money sitting there, but that's just begging to be used really. So that's the first point. Uh, the second point is utilising your the internet speeds from these big providers um, at low costs. So again if you're a Bedfordshire school um, or any school really that uses a local authority based internet connection um, or serviced internet connection that typically will be on a lease line option I'm guessing. Lease lines are the most expensive in terms of performance, a lease line will offer you a one-to-one -one connection. You will generally get symmetrical upload and download speeds. It's very robust, great, but it's costly. Now, that was something which was really important maybe five, six years ago, where to get those sorts of speeds into a school, because the local exchanges just couldn't cope with them, you needed to have that lease line to be able to provide that that level of, of performance um, for the number of users and devices a school actually had. Um, Virgin in particular um, have uh, been introducing their Voom services for some time now. And the Voom services allow you to have 100, 200, 300 meg um, download speeds and pretty good upload speeds um, straight from their, from their exchanges. Now that is amazing 
Um, I think, if, again, if you went back five or six years and said, you know, we can we can get 200 meg, 300 meg broadband at home, it would just be pie in the sky, really. There's, you know, you'd be lucky if you get 10. Um, but we are now looking at 100, 200, 300. And uh, we've had a few schools that have moved over to the, v the Voom service because they are now getting that type of speed for very low cost. So we're talking, if you go with a provider that can bundle it with uh, the connection itself, the full filtering solution and all the control and design elements of that, um, which us here at Fluent Blue and a multitude of other providers can do for you, you are going to save thousands. Um, typical lease line, 100 meg lease line, you could be paying up to maybe £8,000 a year just for the line. Um, you've then got to put filtering on top and various things, it works out a lot. You know, you could get a Voom service, 200 meg Voom service, and you might be paying maybe, I don't know, £150 a month for that connection. So you can see there's a huge, huge difference uh, in cost. But in terms of performance and speed, you are not going to be losing anything. So for primary schools, lower schools, you know, if you are on a lease line option, please have a look of wh whether you can get these types of connections in your area. Obviously, the rural village schools, it might be tricky to get, but certainly if you're a school in a, in, a, in a big residential area or something like that, or next to a main residential area, chances are all those exchanges have been upgraded. Um, so you can now get fantastic speeds. And the filtering options that you've got from people like Untangle and Lightspeed and all these different providers, your filtering is going to be top notch. You know, it's going to be really, really good. Tailored to you, flexible, allow you to adapt your, your control and filtering needs um, and have full visibility on your school. So the beauty of that, like I said, it's designed for you. It's not this blanket, everyone has the same filtering. There's no flexibility, you can't move around from it, which tends to be what happens with the local authority solution because they have to provide that kind of blanket coverage for everyone because it's easy to manage. If you go with a private company, they are going to tailor it to you. So you're going to get better value. So it's a twofold win-win really. Firstly, you're going to get great speeds um, and in some uh, instances, faster speeds. You're going to save a lot of money and you're going to have filtering that's designed for you um, and be more adaptive um, to, your, to your needs as you change over the, you know, over the next sort of you know, 12, 18 months. You know, you'll, your access will change and develop, so you'll be able to get onto things a lot easier and, uh, and like I said, have more sort of secure visibility of what your users are doing on, on your connection as well, which is really, really important for safeguarding. So, uh, for, they're the first two things. So you've got your espresso and you've got your internet connection. Now, your, the third thing is your Microsoft licensing. Now, we've all heard of the EES agreements and all these school agreements where you can pay a specific amount per annum and it covers, uh, might be your operating system for your servers and, and, uh, and desktops and laptops. Uh, it could cover you for well, a multitude of different things, really. Um, that's all great. It is definitely still the most cost-effective way of doing it. Um, schools get very, very good pricing for licensing under those under those types of agreements, and it's something that we offer to all our clients, and it works very, very well. One thing to look at though is every year when you come up to that renewal sort of point, you need to be looking at what you're licensing, because there is a big, big chance that what you're actually licensing for and what you're actually using are two different things. So there's a huge difference between that. At the end of the day, Microsoft aren't going to provide you it for free. You know, you're paying for it. Whatever you choose, you're going to pay for. So we need to have a look at what we're licensing for. Try and get a bit of a, for, uh, a foresight into what you're going to be investing in that year, whether the licensing will assist your cost saving on that. For example, if you're buying laptops um, and you've got a, a, a school agreement which covers you for operating system, you could buy home version laptops, which are cheaper than pro version, and then you can just upgrade the operating systems as part of your, e, you know, your, your agreement. That way, you're going to save money. But if you're only buying one or two laptops that year, but you're paying for licensing for operating system, you need to look at, well, how much is that compared to the difference between upgrading from a home to a pro laptop? And you probably find that it's cheaper over a course of a, of a year just to get the two laptops with the pro operating system and not have to worry about upgrading them. So like I said, 
Let's have a little look at what we're actually getting. So we had an instance not so long ago where a school said to us, look, can you have a look at our licensing? Uh, we tend to just renew it every year, but not 100% sure what we're licensing for. So what I did is I had a little look through. There was a couple of items which the school didn't need anymore, just weren't utilizing properly. So we removed those. And then we just repriced everything and rejigged everything and got up to date kind of cost model on that. And it actually meant that that school saved 1200 pounds that year on licensing. And all it took was a quick 10 minute glance over by myself to have a little look at what they were getting, have a chat with the school to find out what their requirements were and just realign everything. Nice and simple, really easy, uh, didn't take long. And lo and behold, they had 1200 pounds back in the budget. Um, so if you look at 1200 pounds there, espresso to you know 2000 pound there, you know, utilizing the Voom services on their broadband potentially, maybe a few thousand pounds there, all of a sudden we're starting to have four, five, six thousand pounds just suddenly appearing back in our budget. So, and that's just on three things. So, win-win. The last thing is the, 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 the black art of uh, printing. So, we all know that print for schools is costly, whether that be the, the lease for the, the, the actual printers themselves, the copiers themselves, the cost per print, the, the, all the consumables, the servicing, the paper, all these different things do tend to just kind of get lost in and everyone's kind of clicking away and print, 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 print. What we have to realize is when a managed print um, agreement, every time we hit print, it costs the school money. Simple as that, you know. So, you know, if, if you've got teachers who are printing off 30 page documents in full color multiple times, we need to kind of get a control of that to find out, firstly, do we need to be printing all that? Secondly, does it need to be color? Um, and that's kind of really what we need to be doing. So print is one of the largest IT expenditures um, for schools because there's lots of different elements that, that kind of hook into that. So like I said, you've got your cost per print, which on the mono and the color, color being more expensive. We've then got the lease of the equipment, if that's how you've done it. Um, and then we've got all the uh, extra consumables, like like I said, like reams of paper and things like that. You know, we've seen schools going through thousands and thousands and thousands of, of prints uh, per quarter. Um, and the numbers are absolutely astonishing, really astonishing. Um, and like I said, every time we hit print, it costs the school money. So if we can look at the policies that we've got in place, Little enforcements like, you know, not printing color as default, not maybe giving as much open freedom to print color as much as we, you know, we want because it might not be necessary. Those little kind of tweaks, although it might be a little bit irritating at the beginning because, you know, I want to print color, it's going to save on school an awful lot of money. And ultimately, when that money comes back in, it can be reinvested for teaching and learning and everyone's going to benefit. So, it, it, like I said, it is a win-win situation with, with print. So, certainly on the printing side, we can do a full review for you. We've got our specialist here um, who can come in, have a look at your print policies, have a look at how you're doing things, look at your cost per print, how we can improve and control things. And I think that's probably a, a really, really kind of key area just to maybe stop, take a step back, let's have a little look at what we're doing um, because otherwise it can get a little bit about a little bit out of control. So I would say they are going to be the four top things where we can just instantly review and work out whether we're using our budget effectively for that. So just to go over again, we've got our um, espresso uh, or subscriptions. I would put espresso with all subscriptions really, things that you're paying into per annum that might be things that aren't so tangible. Um, like I said, it might be a box like espresso. It could be a, a website or a subscription that we're buying into that we're paying monthly for or annually for. Have a little look, are we using it? If not, let's get rid of it and get something that is effective. Uh, secondly, is your internet options. Have a little look, see what you're paying. Have a little look at what um, type of connections that you can get locally. Do a bit of cost comparison and performance comparison and work out is it the best idea and best uh, package for you. Uh, third is your uh, Microsoft licensing. Again, when it's coming up to that renewal point, stop, have a little look, review. Is it what we need? Are we going to reutilize it? If not, don't pay for it. Simple as that. Um, and the last thing is your managed printing or your printing in general. Again, stop, have a review. 
Are we utilising it properly? Do we have the policies in place? Do we have the control in place? Um, or, or are we hemorrhaging money uh, through print when really we don't need to? So they're going to be your four main things that I think will be instant. Espresso, internet, licensing and print. So any of these things we can assist with, give us a call. Like I said, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get all this latest content. If you want advice and assistance on any of the elements I've uh, mentioned today, um, all the details will be down in, in the, uh, the section below, all our contact details, give us a call. I'll be delighted to come in, have a chat with you or any, you know, any of my team can come in and have a, a chat with you to, to run through this and we can see how we can help you be more budget efficient and find those, find those pounds and pennies that are hiding in your budget. Um, and yeah, we can maximise your, your, your IT as much as we physically can. So thank you very much for watching every, everyone. Uh, our next video was, is going to be our part two of our interactive flat panels where we're going to be talking about um, a few models and what the pros and cons to them and what we think is going to be your top um, IFP purchase. So again, thank you for watching and uh, yeah, we'll be back soon. Thank you.